If you're interested in college football recruiting, defensive philosophy, or what coaches are looking for in their athletes, today is your day. If you want to know about quarterback training, if you want to know about defensive play, today is your day. Coming up in the film room, we have one of the hottest young coaches in America, and it starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro and world champion quarterback. If it's your first time to the channel, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. That way you'll get notified every time we have new content coming out. Also, please leave me a comment down below. Anything you want to see, anything you've heard that you want to talk about, I'd love to answer your questions. And give me a thumbs up if you're ready to learn about college football recruiting. Today, we're talking to Justin Wilcox, head coach at Cal. I was able to sit down with him for about 20 minutes before last season. And what he said then still holds true today. We're not able to sit down for interviews right now. So I thought I'd bring you the nuggets in this one. It's a really good interview. Justin opens up with me about a lot of his philosophies, what he's looking for in high school recruits as a coaching staff, what they're thinking about when they're evaluating players. And you really don't want to miss the end when he talks about what he's looking for in terms of toughness and goals, because those are really important for young players. But right now, let's just hit to the interview. Got Justin Wilcox from Cal in the Coach's Corner. We want to talk a little bit about kind of coaching philosophy and general football stuff. Obviously, you come from the defensive side of the ball. Tell me your philosophy here as a coach. Well, um, you know, we, we talk a lot about culture and intangibles here. And, uh, you know, first and foremost, for us to be successful, um, we got we to gotta play smart and tough. And so everything we do from our workouts to our meetings to, uh, you know, just the life we lead, you know, we, it's with that in mind, how we become smarter and tougher. You know, everybody is training uh, to become a better athlete and, uh, you know, raise their football IQ. But when you watch us play, that's what needs to show. And you hear so much about toughness in football, right? But quantify that. People, what's your definition of yeah. toughness? What does that mean? Yeah, that's a great question. And people do, everybody talks about it, right? And it's, uh, what's more important is to bring it to life and, and put it to action. I think there's a couple different ways. Obviously, the physical part of the game. Football's a physical game, as you know, and uh, takes a toll on your body, and, and you have to persevere. And you have sore ankles and those things, and workouts are tough. But I think also the mental toughness, you know, when you get tired and things are stacked against you, uh, whether it's in school or whether it's in, you know, the football game or it's going to happen in life, you know, when you're going to have those moments that you've got to be able to push through and, and have that mental toughness. And then the emotional toughness, you know, uh, you have the good days, you have the bad days and being able to, to uh, kind of have that focus that, you know, I'm going to attack the day no matter what. And, it, and things do happen. We, we all go through things, every player, every person, and to have that emotional toughness. So those three things, the physical, the mental, and the emotional, are a big part of this. Yeah, anybody who plays football, even quarterbacks, can go out and hit somebody in the mouth at any time. But it's all the stuff that happens around that that makes the huge difference. When you're looking at high school athletes, what are you looking at for kids on film? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, first and foremost, you know, before we see the film, we're looking at the academic performance and uh, what they're doing in school. Um, we're making sure they're living, living right off the field, you know, checking their social media and finding out who these, who these guys are. Uh, and then on the field, you know, we're looking for production. And uh, it comes in a lot of different ways and shapes and forms. And at quarterback, you know, you... You want to be able to see a guy that can complete the ball and is accurate, and it, but he's got to show toughness. And does he move the team up and down the field? You know, now he might be six five, he might be five eleven. They they may look uh, different physically, but uh, you know, you're looking for that production. And for guys that when you watch them on film, how much is being polished play into it? How, you know, production is yeah. the biggest key, right? It's always about the W. Who can get the win? Mm -hmm. But how much does being polished, having those reps, matter when you sure. see them on film? Yeah, I think. Uh, <clears throat> You see kind of different phases of players, and, and what you're looking for is do they have the ability, uh, whether they're polished or not, uh, to grow as a player that can help us, in our, in our case, you know, win, win the Pac-12. You know, so when we watch a player, or if it's a quarterback specifically, you know, does this guy have the tangibles and intangibles to be that person? And some guys uh, have grown up with, you know, trainers and been in programs where it's uh, much more intensive and some guys don't and so we take that into account and at the end of the day do they have the ability to get there that's what we're what we're looking for as a quarterback as i'm facing defenses i'm trying to pick out weak spots in defense I was, i'm trying to find holes where our plays will fit as a defensive guy as, as you know having been a defensive coordinator played that side of the ball 
What are you looking at from quarterbacks? What are you trying to read? Yeah, that's a, well, you're always trying to make them play, quote unquote, left handed. You know, and I don't mean that in a literal sense, right. but take away what they do best. And so if a guy, if a quarterback's a, uh, you know, a, a pocket guy and he's really good stepping up, you know, we want to make it uncomfortable for him there. If he's a guy that's a zone read guy, we want to maybe make him stand in the pocket. Um, does he throw it certain routes? You know, is he a quick game guy? We're going to play more quest co uh, press coverage. Does he, does he throw... Uh, you know, is he, is he less accurate down the field? You know, so we're going to try and look at what the offense and the quarterback does specifically. Maybe it's targets on the field um, and specific areas, but we're going to try and take that away. And so within our defense, you know, we're going to have certain calls that, that move the stress around. So maybe we, like I said, we're going to take away the quick game and we know we're going to make them try to beat us throwing fades, for example. So we're always trying to take away what they do best. And oftentimes quarterbacks, and I'm talking to you guys at home now, quarterbacks love to practice what they do well. But what I'm hearing from you right now is that you need to do all of it because the more that you can do well, the harder it is as a defensive guy to take it away. Absolutely. And if a guy is a good in the pocket and he can you know, run, he's good at, uh, on the move and can create when things don't go well in the pocket, uh, you know, accuracy is always huge, as, as we all know. But, uh, yeah, if it's, if it's a few different things, then it becomes a much, much more difficult game plan for the defense. Yeah, and you just made a really key point for a quarterback. For me, the number one thing I look at is accuracy. Yeah. You look at a kid, if he's not accurate, he's not there. How do you train your quarterbacks here to become more accurate? I think uh, some of that is, uh, you know, kind of innate, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I think you can, you can help a guy with his accuracy in terms of his fundamentals and his footwork, uh, his eye control, his body positioning, but there's also you know, kind of the innate ability to throw the football. And as you know, there's quarterbacks that have, you know, an over-the-top or three-quarter delivery, and, and some guys are really good uh, playing that way. Uh, so we're not trying to, I guess, always start from scratch. You know, if a, if a guy has good accuracy, you think we can help him make it great, you know. But I, I think it's probably difficult for a guy to be a two on an accuracy and make him a ten. Right. Yeah. And that, that gets back to kind of a lot of what we do. A lot of the techniques that we're teaching are teaching for personal body styles. Right. Each quarterback's going to be different. There's no perfect throwing motion, but the best throwing motion is the one that's your most accurate and most efficient coming off. So same thing for other athletes. As they train now, what do you think high school kids should be emphasizing? Well, uh, you know, the one thing that we really do like is people doing different things. And when I say that, I mean playing football, playing basketball, uh, running track, playing baseball, wrestle. And I know there's a lot of pressure these days to, uh, you know, focus in one area. And I, and I understand why that pressure exists, but uh, for the betterment of the athlete and uh, the long-term benefit of playing other sports, I think is significant. So we like the fact, you know, when a guy is a, a football player, and he, and he goes to play basketball or wrestles and plays baseball. And we know that maybe some of the football skills might be a little less, but in the long run, they're going to be better for it. And then the second piece of that is just the competition. You know, we want competitors. And uh, sometimes, as you mentioned, people will do what they do well because it's easy for them. I want to see uh, somebody that will go out and push themselves. And, you know, maybe they're not the going to win the 100 meters, but they go out and work at it and they compete cause for the sake of competition. Or maybe they're not the basketball star like they are in, in football, but they go out there because they're trying to win and be a part of a team and compete. I think that speaks volumes. Always looking to compete and win. Quality character is a huge, huge piece of it too. Uh, obviously, being part of a team, chemistry matters. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's, uh, you know, the more and more that we get that at the youth levels and understanding that you can have your own personal goals but still be a great teammate. And uh, we spend a lot of time on that here because the best teams and the best performing teams uh, are always, always have the best chemistry. And we all, I think, have been a part of those teams. And you know when it's not right. And you know what that feels like because I think we've been on those as well. So I think the fact that, you know, being a great teammate and being honest and accountable and, and uh, you know, being a, t a tough person that's in it for the team, I think that's really key. And you mentioned a really important piece, and I think especially for younger players, goals, goal setting. What's your approach to goal setting? Yeah, I think uh, one thing we talk about, we talked about our team goals last night in terms of what we're trying to get done, you know, like why are we here? And winning a bowl game, uh, winning the North, winning the Pac-12, and then individually, what is it that you as an individual have the personal goals on and off the field? And we talk a lot about those, and once you set them, 
yeah, we know what those are, but now it's about how do we get there and the process that it takes and the, the decisions you have to make on a daily basis to achieve them because it's one thing to slap them up on the wall, but it's another thing to live the lifestyle that's going to allow you to get there. Which brings us right back to toughness, yep. which is where we started. You set your goals and you have to have the mental toughness and the ability to focus on the right now, but still keep that long picture in mind. How hard is that for young athletes? It's, uh, I think it's hard for everybody, yeah. you know, and I think the older you get, the more you kind of can appreciate it. And we talk about that uh, daily and, and uh, the, the focus and uh, the decisions that you have to make every single day from, from getting up and not sleeping in uh, to, to drinking your water, to being early to your class, to having the right gear on in the weight room, uh, the, rep, the last rep of your, of your last set of, of uh, overhead squats, you know, every pe- part of individual, the focus in a meeting. How, you know, to be able to do that day in and day out, that's what separates people. Because there's a lot of talent out there, uh, and some have more than others, but the, the, what really separates people is the habits and the lifestyle and those decisions that you're making on a daily basis. And, and that is key. So for everybody at home, Coach just started camp today, took the time out to come in and sit talk with us. Uh, thank you so much, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you. I love your philosophy on the appreciate game. It. Looking forward to seeing some success here this year. Thanks. Well, we covered a lot of ground. If you learned about the game, give me a thumbs up. Also, Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. That way you get notified every time there's new content coming out. And leave me a comment down below. Anything that Coach said that stands out, I want to hear about it. You understand more now how college coaches think about high school recruiting, about football recruiting in general, what types of athletes they're looking for, about quarterbacks. We covered everything. I appreciate you watching. I look forward to seeing you next time in the film room. I'm Mike Pulaski for Lead Athletes TV.